Welcome to iLector Online. So, even if we don't quite know how we got here, we are indeed here, and we are indeed living in this universe. So it came about through some method. And the explanation that we have scientifically is called the Big Bang, and you see there are quite a few things about the Big Bang that make it a plausible theory. But there's one part of the total theory of the Big Bang that really is on very, very shaky ground, so to speak. Me personally, I don't put a lot of, uh, don't have a lot of confidence that what they're saying about that aspect of the Big Bang is actually even true. It's called the inflationary period. And it was a period that was inserted because they needed it to be able to explain the Big Bang. Something happened that they can't explain at the very beginning. And so something, somehow, something must have happened to allow the universe to have formed in that very initial period of time. So if we go back in the, to the theory, we think that it started at time equals zero, and that the smallest quantum of time is 1 times 10 to the minus 43 seconds. Now that's a purely theoretical number that somebody calculated saying, hey, that's the smallest piece of time that can exist. All right, let's accept that. Then they said that when a little bit of time went by, so now we're at time equals 10 to the minus 38 seconds. Imagine how small a time period that is. And from 10 to the minus 38 to 10 to the minus 35 seconds, which is that incredibly, incredibly short period of time, the universe, they claim, whoever they is, that the universe expanded at a tremendously rapid rate. In that very short period of time, the universe expanded from a tiny, 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 piece of universe filled with energy to something that was much, much bigger. They claimed that increased by a factor of 10 to the 50th. Now, the problem with that is that if you take a look at what an atom is, an atom is the simplest atom. It's a hydrogen atom with a proton and an electron. And the diameter of that atom is 1 times 10 to the minus 10. So let's assume that at the very beginning, the whole universe was the size of a hydrogen atom. Very, very tiny. If it grew by a factor of 10 to the 50, it would then be bigger than the universe is today. So that is problematic. So whatever number you see out there, we really don't know. And I've seen all kinds of things where it grew to the size of a grapefruit, to the size of the earth. I think people are just purely guessing. They're coming up with some theories, they're putting some numbers down, and they come up with these results that may or may not be plausible or possible. So that part of the the theory, the Big Bang theory, is somewhat problematic, called the inflationary period. And it was a purely imagination introduction to that part of the theory because there's no shred of evidence that that actually happened. Not a shred. But why is there a need for something like that? Well, we realized that all the matter of the universe, according to the theory, was formed in the first few minutes and perhaps as little as the first few seconds of its existence. And if the universe had been too small, there would not be any room for all that matter. Matter of fact, matter is constructed in a very interesting way. It's consistent of a proton electron, and so the volume of matter is, is made by the electrons going around the nucleus, but those volumes are huge compared to the volume of the actual nucleus. If you push all the nuclei together, you end up with a tremendous amount of mass but a very small volume. The entire universe would be able to fit within the orbit of the Earth around the Sun if you take all the space from between the electrons of the protons and squish them together, take all the matter in the universe, it would actually become a very relatively small ball of matter, but it would be so dense that it would immediately turn into a black hole. Matter of fact, even if it was the size of our solar system, it would turn into immediately into a black hole. If it was the size of a galaxy, it would turn into a black hole. The universe would have had to be big enough for the matter to exist without immediately converting it into a black hole because the gravitational force would be so enormous. So they had to come up with something to prevent that from happening. And so they threw in the inflationary period. Well, that's where the break, the, obviously the theory breaks down somewhat. It's could have happened, perhaps. Do we have evidence? None at all. Uh, but something had to explain why there was room in the universe to make all that matter without 
immediately turn the whole universe into a black hole so that we could actually exist. So something happened in the beginning of the universe and maybe we have the concept of how big the universe was at the very beginning completely wrong. Well, that's the part of the theory, the Big Bang Theory, that is still, in my opinion, pretty fuzzy, and we have to somehow work that out. And um, I do have some plans to work with some of my colleagues to try to come up with some ideas, but again, these are just ideas, but I do think that we have some of the aspects of the theory wrong. The rest of it, what we saw in the previous video, is fairly strong. We have some strong uh, observational evidence that shows that these things probably happened, but at the very beginning, uh, I think it's pure guesswork, and we probably need to polish it up somewhat to really understand what happened at the very beginning of the universe. But you can see that there's some major problems with the theory, and we still don't have all the answers. So, at least, let's put that on the side saying that's what they say, maybe it's true, maybe it's not, we'll get to the bottom of it someday. And that's where we're leaving at the moment.